This is a braiding foot. Mine has a screw here that requires a small Phillips head screwdriver. Some have finger screws on here so that you can adjust this bar either closer or further back depending on the width of whatever you're going to be putting in here. This one is designed for a quarter inch width. This is, this is a quarter inch ribbon. You see how it lays in there very flat. You can also use this for sequence or anything else that is wider than a cord, otherwise you'd use your cording foot, but narrower than a quarter inch. This is one of the feet that was out of the 52 piece set. <clears throat> I did notice when I went to use it that the quality of this foot is not the best. You can see how it rocks back and forth, which means it's not going to be that stable. If you like this type of foot, I may suggest you buy a better quality one. I don't know whether they're all like that or if it just this one in the set that I bought was defective. Uh, most of the other feet that I've worked with so far has been fairly decent quality, um, but this one I'm not too pleased with. So the first thing I'm going to do <clears throat> is put my thread underneath. You don't have to. I just this is my personal preference to go ahead and feed the thread through the bottom. Oops. There it goes. I don't really like the quality of this foot but I'm still going to show how it can be used. So if you have a higher quality one, then that'll be nice. So this ribbon's going to go down through here, through the bottom. It's even sitting down on the thing where I have to pick it up. Now I'm going to use a zigzag stitch <clears throat> and what I want to do with the zigzag stitch is have the needle hit just inside the edges and go across like this. So let's Try a 3.5 and 4.0. You can also use a straight stitch. If you were doing strings of sequence, the straight stitch would probably be preferable on that. So there's your straight stitch, and there's the zigzag. The next item I'm going to do is some of my cording. This takes me a minute to get down through the slit. I try all kinds of different things because I enjoy having fun with my sewing machine and experimenting with different items to see how they work. So I already have it set on straight stitch, so I'm going to start with a straight stitch. Now I'm going to make a zigzag. I'm at 3.5 wide and 2.0 long. Be 
because this is just a demonstration, I'm not locking my stitches at the beginning and the end. So that's kind of a neat effect with the cord there. And then this, oh, I puckered some. This is the straight stitch. Now this ribbon is narrower. Because this is narrower, this plate right here could be moved further closer to the needle so that it you can see, here let me take it off. See how it's angled in? So as this plate moves closer this way, this opening is going to narrow to help guide this a little bit better. Because mine does not have a finger screw, I am not going to take the time right now to um, do it right. Uh, yeah, can't even really think this morning. I'm not going to take the time to unscrew this and move it. So I'll just go kind of kind of slow. And I'm going to start off with a straight stitch. Because I don't have that bar up farther, it's not going to be held in the center as easily. Now I'm going to put it on zigzag. But it's narrower, so I need to bring my width in. So that's 2.5 width and 2.0 length. zigzag and the straight stitch like I said it wasn't being held in the center very well because I didn't have the front bar moved back any this next one I'm going to do is kind of fun because you can use it for like mock-up military braiding or really fancy braiding I got this at Joann's. I'm not endorsing them, it's just that's where I bought it. And it is a little bit wider than a quarter inch, but because of the way it's made, it will fit into this. And I'm going to do a zigzag of 3.5 with 2.0. don't want to cut this because it's just a demonstration so you can see especially if you use the same color thread tension's a little off, that's why it's puckering. You can also just do the straight stitch on this as well. I find that the zigzag on this particular kind is better because it can distort if you just use a straight stitch. But with this, you can do all kinds of curves and loops. Follow it around like that. 
have fun with it and do different designs. And then here's some fun with some organza ribbon. This is definitely wider than a quarter inch. I cut at an angle just to make it easier to feed through. And I did this just to play around and have fun. I'm going to set my stitch as wide as it can as wide as it can go, which is 7.0 for my machine. Just kind of fold it around a little bit just so that it's easier to let it go through. And then I'm going to set a longer stitch. Let's do 3.0. And it's going to gather the stuff, well not gather, but pull it in as I sew. textured bit of braiding. There are many other items that you can run through this as long as your needle and your machine can handle it. Hopefully yours is a little better quality than this one so that it's not rocking back and forth. I did seem to have to work it a little bit more than what I should have in order to keep things straight. This is the adjustable bias foot. It has two adjust adjustments on it. This one at the top moves the whole unit in or out so that you can adjust where the edge of the bias will pass under the needle. So you can have it in the left position or the center position or anywhere in there and that lets you move it in and out. This adjustment down here adjusts how wide the bias tape itself is. So if you have a very wide tape you can see that the W is on the top so you'd roll it up and that expands that space, as you can see, so that it will be wider. And for a narrow one, you're going to roll it down to the end, and that will make it more narrow. So since it has two adjustments on it, this is where you should probably get scrap fabric and a bias tape that is the same size as what you're going to use. Play around with it and get your adjustments correct before you start on the, the work that you're, you're wanting to finish. So the first thing I'm going to do is put in my bias tape. You can see that there are the little prongs sticking out. That's what's going to hold, you can see, i got to put this in here, it's kind of hard to do with the, um, the camera in front of me. Alright, this is a lot wider so I'm going to take it to wider. Should be plenty of room. It's actually too big now, it's falling out. Adjust it back down to hold it. A 
want it to hold it snug, but not make it pucker. Okay, probably should have picked a different color so you could see this more easily. So you can see how these tabs, oops, are in there. And now it feels snug, but it's not puckering. So I'm going to put it on the machine. And then this is where you do this adjustment. Okay, now I'm going to make this adjustment. Put my thread under there. Now it does have some play in it, so I'm going to lower this down to help stabilize it some. And then I'm going to be do using my center stitch where my needle is in the center. So I want to adjust this in or out so that the needle will fall near the edge of the bias. So there's my needle. So see how I can pull it out or push it in. I do need to lift the foot just a little because it's holding on to the bias tape. And as that falls, it'll fall on the edge. Tighten that back up. And then I'm ready to sew. Lift my foot back up. Take the edge of my fabric and place it inside that bias tape. Make sure it's fully in there. And then I'm going to zoom out. So you can see the prep work I'm doing back here. I'm making sure that this, the edge of this is inside the bias tape. And then I just hold it and let it sew. And with a little practice, this foot can help you stay right on the edge of that bias tape. This is called the nail button pressure foot. I've never used this before, but it looks like it's pretty cool. It's got an edge in the back so that it stays flat when it's on a button. So, one of these buttons and these rubber paddings up here to hold on to the button so it doesn't slip. And that helps keep it level. So let's see how well this works. Most buttons will have a top and a bottom. So just put the top up, and choose your zigzag stitch. I manually roll the needle down. For the first two stitches to make sure that it's not going to hit the button and then I use the pedal. Give it a 
like that. Manually lower it for the first two stitches. And that did very well. It held this button solid. It did not move at all. So if you're doing a lot of buttons that you're not hand stitching, that you're using the machine for, this is a nice little helpful foot. Both of these are bead feet. They can do, they do zigzag stitches to go from one side to the other. They both have very large openings in the bottom, which allows for the beads to pass under. And whatever width this is and height, that's the size bead that it will handle. Unfortunately, I do not have any string beads that will fit in these right now, but I can still demonstrate it because it will serve the same function as putting these cords through because these cords will fit. So I can still demonstrate how it works. So you can use this on these very large cords or for beading. Choose a zigzag stitch. I'm going to go full width, which is 7.0. And then I'll manually do the first two stitches to be sure it doesn't hit anything. Now your length of your stitch is going to be determined by how large your beads are. You want to make sure that it falls in between your beads and not like on top of your beads so that it will lock them into place. Lengthened my stitch. Now, of course, on beads these will fall down in between the beads. You can also make your width narrower to hide that more in between the beads. And of course you would want to pick a matching thread if you're doing something like this. But it shows, I just wanted to demonstrate that it would handle these, these larger cords or beads. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you like these videos. Thank you.